I'm Ada, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Anthony, and I'm a level two chef. Great, here we go. I'm Michael, I'm a level three chef. I've been cooking for 27 years. I kind of know my way around a kitchen. The last time I made the mac and cheese recipe was about two weeks ago. I'd say I make this recipe once, twice a month at least. I made this recipe a couple days ago for my kids. This recipe was inspired by my grandmother that I put together at Red Rooster, where I was executive chef. I'm gonna start with my pasta. First thing I'm gonna do is pour a cap full of olive oil to make sure the macaronis don't stick. I'm not gonna add olive oil. I'm Italian, I grew up adding a little bit of olive oil to the pot, but then one time I tried not doing it and I realized it was just a complete waste of olive oil to do that. My rule is that it should taste like the ocean. We actually bring the water up to a rapid boil, 212 degrees. We're gonna add salt. For every two gallons, I like to add a half a cup of salt. This is elbow macaroni. This is cavatappi. We're going to use gamelli pasta. It's the easiest to cook and my grandma uses it all the time, so. It's my favorite pasta for mac and cheese because it's got so many ridges and squiggles. All that surface area is perfect for cheese sauce to stick to. And really, that's all this thing is. It's just a cheese sauce delivery vehicle. Gamelli pasta allows for the cheese sauce to wrap around the pasta, and it just gives great texture to your macaroni and cheese. All right, let's add the pasta. Once you add it in, you want to give it a quick stir. Now comes the moment of truth. We're going to taste test one of them and see if they're ready. Mm, that's perfect. Yeah. Very nice and al dente, and this will hold up in the baking process when we go to bake the mac and cheese. Now, while the macaroni is still hot, I like to season it with pepper and seasoned salt. Then, I add my butter. Before we bake the mac and cheese, I like to toast up a little bit of panko just to add kind of a nice crispy texture on top. My topping is actually a graham cracker and pepper streusel. It has a little bit of bacon to give it a smoky quality to it. We're gonna add in a little graham cracker. I'm using a combination of white sugar and brown sugar. The brown sugar has a little more molasses in it and it lends for a little more caramelization. A little salt for seasoning, black pepper, a little bit of vanilla, We're gonna add a little bit of melted butter. Mix it up till you get a nice crumb and then it's ready to go on top of the mac and cheese. All right, let's make this sauce. I'm first gonna start with about a fourth stick of butter to kind of simmer in the pan just a little bit. I'm gonna add a cup of milk. We're gonna start with half and half, just over medium heat. The technique for making the bouillie, we're gonna add a little bit of cold milk, and then we're gonna whisk in flour. The bouillie won't separate, and it allows for the mac and cheese to be a little more creamier. We're gonna whisk in white pepper, a little bit of nutmeg, roasted garlic, mustard powder. The four flavors that we added in lends for a sweet, spicy element to the mac and cheese. We turn the bouillie off, and then basically we're gonna melt the cheese with the residual heat. Then I'm going to add my different cheeses. Cheddar cheese, American cheese, and monster cheese. Smells amazing. You don't have to add these in in any particular order. We're going to go alphabetical. So I'm going to add my Havarti. Now before we add the next cheese, we want to make sure that the first one is fully incorporated. In goes the mascarpone. Every last drop. So into the bouillie, we add the Gruyere and cheddar. The hardest cheeses first, which will allow time for them to melt. I add a quarter cup of flour. Now the sauce is nice and rich. The Parmigiano-Reggiano. And finally, the white cheddar. And then we're going to add in our high maestro cheese, which is going to help in the baking. That's Philadelphia cream cheese. Philadelphia cream cheese is going to prevent the water and the fat from separating in the oven. So the more moisture you have in the baking process, the more stable your mac and cheese will be. Now we're going to add the cubes of mozzarella. I have one more ingredient for my sauce, the egg. The egg is what holds everything together. It'll look really runny, but we're gonna depend on the starches and the pasta when we actually cook it, and that'll help everything tighten up. The cheeses don't need to be completely melted down at this point. They'll melt down in the oven when you go to bake it. All right, now let's put it all together. So first I'm gonna put the macaroni into the pan. I'm just taking room temperature butter here. We're just going to kind of paint the, the bottom and the sides of the cast iron pan. You don't need a whole lot here. We're going to add our pasta. We're using a gratin baking dish. It will hold all the heat and keep your pasta warm even well after you baked it in the oven. I love using a cast iron pan for my mac and cheese. I don't know, I like that country feel, you know? Then I take my cheese and I pour it. All right, we're just mixing the cheese sauce and the pasta together to make sure that every little piece of cavatappi is covered. My mouth is watering. We're gonna fold in our cheese sauce. It's okay that the cheese sauce is a little bit thick. Once you put it in the oven, it'll melt and kind of fill in all of the crevices of the pasta. Then I'm going to add my cheese. You know, I might as well just cover the whole thing with cheese. It's 
spreading it around into one even layer, and then we're gonna cover it with that toasted panko. And now for the crumb topping. So now we're gonna put this in the oven at 350 for 10 to 15 minutes. And now we're gonna bake it for 30 minutes at 350 degrees. At 325 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, this looks cheesy. This looks good. Looks perfect. The color is good, the texture is good. This, this is just perfect. And a little bit of scallion on top. Got the toasty, crunchy panko on top. I can't wait to see how cheesy it is underneath. <sighs> All right, this looks great. Creamy, crunchy, you can smell the bacon. Now for the moment of truth, let's try it. Mmm, no wonder my kids love this. This is good mac That's and perfect. cheese. As you just saw, macaroni and cheese can be very simple or more complex. Let's take a look and see what makes each one of these recipes different. Let's start with the cheese, which is the most important part of mac and cheese. Ada used cheddar, American, and Munster. American cheese is high in moisture as well as high in fat content, so it's very smooth and melts nicely. You can already see the cheese starting to melt. The cheese isn't aged or fermented for a very long time, and it's got some additives that maybe you don't necessarily want in your mac and cheese. Anthony added Parmigiano Reggiano, which isn't the best melting cheese, but it gives a lot of really intense, delicious cheese flavor. Everybody needs a little bit more parm in their life. He paired it with mascarpone, which is a cheese that has a really high moisture content, so it kind of brings the meltability of the Parmigiano Reggiano along with it. Michael added Philadelphia cream cheese to his sauce, which adds a lot of creaminess. And then we're gonna add in our high moisture cheese, the Philadelphia cream cheese. He paired it with mozzarella, which adds a stringy, stretchy quality to his sauce, and it really helps to coat the pasta very nicely. And then we have a little bit of mozzarella for that stringy texture that everyone loves in the mac and cheese. Not all cheeses melt the same way. Cheeses with a higher moisture content melt more readily than cheeses with a lower moisture content. Cheeses with a high moisture content also melt at a lower temperature. We have the caseins and the calcium start to split apart and they flow really nicely with the available water that's in the semi-hard and high moisture cheeses. When you have a hard cheese that's been aged for a long time and the water is lost, the calcium and the casein seize up and they form clumps. You don't really want that in your mac and cheese. To counteract that, you can add other high moisture cheeses like we saw with Michael when he added the Philadelphia cream cheese or with Anthony when he added the mascarpone cheese. So when you're choosing cheese for your mac and cheese, it's important to balance the flavor of a hard cheese with the moisture of a soft cheese. You get really nice meltability and some delicious flavor. Another quality that adds creaminess to the mac and cheese is adding flour because it thickens your sauce. In Ada's sauce, she added her flour with all the other ingredients, so it may have been a little bit unevenly distributed and it didn't coat all of the pasta. Michael used a buoy for his sauce. It's a combination of milk and flour where the milk coats the flour particles so they don't clump together. What you get is a really smooth, creamy sauce. On top of the variety of cheeses, Michael also added some very interesting spices to his dish. Lends for a sweet, spicy element to the mac and cheese. He also added mustard powder, which has some emulsifying properties that keeps the sauce nice and creamy and smooth, and also adds a really nice layer of spice. Ada used an elbow macaroni, which doesn't have a lot of texture, but the shape catches the sauce really well. Anthony used a cavatappi, so you have a lot of surface area with that pasta. The sauce really coats it very well. Because it's got so many ridges and squiggles, all that surface area is perfect for cheese sauce to stick to. So with every single bite, you get a lot of pasta as well as a lot of sauce. Michael used Jamelli, which has a lot of surface area and some texture, so it really soaks up the cheese sauce. Now let's talk about texture, and we'll start with Ada. She just added more cheese on top. You know, might as well just cover the whole thing with cheese. It didn't add any structure or texture to the mac and cheese. Anthony added toasted panko to the top of his mac and cheese, which not only gave it a delicious crunch. Just to add kind of a nice crispy texture on top. But it also added some visual appeal. This looks absolutely perfect. 
Michael took it to another level. He added crumbled up graham crackers, black pepper, and some smoked bacon, which gave a really nice, robust flavor profile to that dish. The chefs used three different dishes and got three different results. Ada used a glass dish, and typically you want to lower the temperature about 25 degrees when you're baking anything in glass, because once glass is hot, it retains heat very well, so you don't want to burn your macaroni and cheese. It takes a lot of energy to heat up cast iron, but once you get it hot, it's a nice even heat. I don't know, I like that country feel, you know? And you get a really nice, crunchy, crispy macaroni. Michael used a ceramic gratin dish to bake his macaroni, which also, just like the cast iron, takes a little bit of energy to heat up, but once it does, it retains heat really well. And here too, you should get a nice, crispy, crunchy edge to your macaroni. The gratin dish is very traditional to use for mac and cheese. See, I mean, it's just, doesn't this look good? Mmm, that's really good. Mmm. When you're making mac and cheese, you're going to want to balance the cheeses, the texture, the pasta, other spices. But at the end of the day, everybody's going to love mac and cheese. No, nothing else needs to be said, but wow. It's more back here. 